Hello, people. It's L up here, Creative Sound, B Project. We're doing this video because I need to redeem myself. I said something in my last video, and I I just wasn't thinking something I forgot that actually exists, and I bypassed that and said something. So one of my viewers called it, and they were like, hey, Ella, you, yeah, um, Studio One can slice. And I'm like, um wait a second and then i went back and i'm like oh yes it can slice but you have to hit shift so right before we get into it guys this video is subjective everything i'm saying is subjective it it's it's it depends on who you are what you're trying to do what you're trying to achieve all of these platforms does the same thing essentially but it, again it, it just depends on like like if you coming from the NPC world, the machine world, or any other dolls, and and you're trying to pick and 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 choose where you're going, and not to mention that the other reason why I'm doing these videos is because Personas sent out a survey to everybody asking what is it that we want to see to promote the idea behind staying inside a studio one to complete the tasks that you're trying to complete so we're doing this video and we breaking things down so this will be pretty fun to just kind of go between studio one and ableton and i'll make some honorable mentions of machine or logic pro when we get to that part but basically if i can take you guys over to my screen this is what we're looking at we got studio one we got a, flat, a fresh slate so what we're going to do is drag the sample sample one on in and this is just simple basic right and this is what happened um if you just bring in a sample like this all right so so this is what happens when you bring in a sample inside of sample one it it comes in as a one shot and right but we're 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 going to do this over so we're going to remove that and but what you got to do you have to remember to hit shift for me it's hit and shift it might be different on your system i don't know but this is just what i find that you have to press before you bring in something um, also, there's other options. There's one that says full range and then octave mode. But in this case, we're going to go for what says slice and add sample to C2. And you can move it to wherever you want. But we, for the sake of this video, we're just going to do it here. So, so it is slicing things. right that's cool now I, I i didn't see a follow button so it seems that our view is stuck on this this one waveform until we click on another section and yeah i guess if we zoom out we can see but again like it is we only see this one section so oh my so when you click on something it just automatically zooms in that's not good let's see it could adjust that's just seeing things better it has nothing to do with the volume that you hear so real quick i mean you you can do quite a bit with this there's You, you, you can do pretty cool things with it. There's a flanger here. I 
then there's reverb. I guess this reverb feeds into this reverb. Right. So that's that's cool. I do like that. It's it's always great to have options within the the plugin and stuff instead of grabbing stuff from other areas. So there there's that. And then you have the amp. Build a curve in front of the sample. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I do like that. That's cool. I like it. That's cool. Um, one, one cool, other cool thing about this, everything is cool. You know what I mean? It's, everything is cool. So you're going to hear me say that a lot. Um, I do use this to record from other instruments. Because the other instrument that I use is called Battery 4, which is made by Native Instruments. And sometimes they add 808s and other type of samples that I feel would be cool if I had control of 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 creating chords and notes or just, you know, just changing things or whatever. You can do it inside of Battery 4, but it is definitely complicated. If you don't know what you're doing, you, you can definitely make, miss it. But inside of here to make it easy because this is a simpler plug-in or yeah sample one it's, it's very simple you can tell this thing to record a input from anywhere it could be an instrument it can be a output it can be from another audio channel or an input from your interface in you know into a mic into this thing so it it, it can it could be routed anywhere which is really good that's a that's a plus about this here. Um, so I, so I'll do that, and then you know I'll change the the sample range or the mapping in here. You know, right up here, and then I have the option to to play with that. I mean, great. I I like it. It's that's cool. I like that. So if we if we go ahead and visit the impact, impact is pretty similar. Same same deal here. If you bring in a sample onto a pad, it will just put the sample on the pad. But you have to remember to hit shift. Now I remember that because I deal with impact probably a little bit more than sample one. But yeah, you can do the same thing here. right um you also have the option to route these individually so you just have to come down here and say in my situation i usually go for mono unless it's stereo you know what i mean and as you can see at the bottom it started to create these different outputs Which means that you can put effects on each individual, which is, again, that's cool. I like it. And, that, and that's how I use it if and when I'm in Impact, having that option to do that. Now, in this case, Momentum is bringing the sample in sliced up by default, like automatically. I, I don't have to hit shift or anything like that. And the cool thing about this here is that there is a lot more you can do with this momentum. And this this is the free version, by the way. So I'm going to change this to shot. So now. Right. You can make a beat just based on the different slices here. 
And that's just that's just basic, right? But the cool thing about this one is that you can go in a little bit further and do other things. Like for instance, I could turn on this pitch here and for this. Right, and then, or if I want to turn on the shutter. Or maybe for this one. And that's, that's how shutter works. I want to turn on the filter. So the way that this works is that you could turn on the filter and it affect all of the drums, but you can have individual control over each shot or each note that is you know what i mean so that's filter and then these other ones yeah delay And then you can come over to the mixer side and do other further customizing your, your sound. Turn on delay. First of all, I have to, I guess, send a little bit more. You know what I mean? I, I don't use this thing a lot, but I do just enough to get by and and do stuff. I, I was working on my sample pack and I, I come through here and just do what I need. You know, just, just messing around with a couple of things. Uh, some other things you could do here is... So this goes back and forth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, right? It's, it's okay. It's it does a little bit more than than obviously the the default sample one here now things like machine machine has the option to allow you to make chords or notes or whatever it's just a matter of like clicking over to the keyboard icon in there you don't need a another pad or you don't need to put the sample on each pad in the group and change the 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 transport the pitch or whatever on each pad you don't have to do that you you have the option to just click over and i believe logic pro is another one that can do can, can do that it's just a matter of clicking the button and it allows you to create a bass line or chords or whatnot in this situation you would have to use sample one so for instance say i create my entire beat in here but 
it it would not do me any justice to put an 808 or a hot hat if I need to change the pitch, you know, back and forth because that's what trap music is anyway. I will put that onto a sample one track instead because now I have the option to like pitch up and down in here. This works it's just you know like a simple sampler, which which is cool. Um but if we quickly just switch over to Ableton, Ableton is built a little bit different. And let's start off with this. Uh if if we go here so we right now we're in the clip launch area and when we talk about creativity like from start we're not even in the simpler yet ableton has a a thing called the simpler or the sampler or or the drum rack we'll we'll go through that but things are done a little bit differently but before we get there <laughs> before we get there we're we're just in the clip launch area so first of all we we we, we brought in a you know something i made like a while back right and 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 so yeah the the clip launch is one of those things where y you can create something real quick and get to it right away and then i can go ahead and grab another sample and just keep it going and create chords and another track blah 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 right so we're going back to that question or that survey right that persona's handed us what is it that w okay we're looking at what it is that will keep us well keep me in studio one something like this where we can where we have the option to create something real quick just throw a sample in there and bam it's already like warped in place and and so here's the other functions right here so 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 check this out Right there, right there. So we're in this section called preserve. Right now it's set to transient. Transients. Now I'm changing the resolution. Let's change it again. Change again. Let's change this. All right. So let's let's change this. Okay. Not much going on there. Let's change this to complex. So it's like changing the green. So right off the rip, this is what you're able to do in, in Ableton. And I and we didn't even go to a simpler. So okay, let's go to a simpler. Let's just uh let's I, I know that's not going to take this sample in and put it there but because we're getting ready to work with some drums I'll just say let's convert this over and I already know 
this is not what I told you to make. But that's fine. Because all we're going to do here is just come in here and get rid of them all and start over. And I'm going to bring over this track onto this pad here. And so just real quick, being able to see things here on the bottom is kind of like a big deal for me. Like I'm an artist. I'm an art person. I like to see, being able to see this, see, see not only in, in order to achieve this, you have to pull up a plugin or pull up the plugin inside of Studio One. But, but even then, like, we're dealing with samples. So inside of a drum rack. Um, anyway, if, if, if we activate, well, I have nothing programmed. So we, you know, but. Right. So, okay. Actually, let's pull up another. Let's pull up the simpler. Um, and this is what this is. This is this is the simpler. But let's 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 pull this thing out. Um, I think all it did was duplicate it. Yeah. So let me. Oh, it just, it moved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's let's pull in the simpler. All right. I'll pull pull a, a separate one. Okay, it didn't catch. All right, so here's the simpler by stuff, right? And I'm going to go ahead and grab the sample that we was working with and push it in here, right? Okay. So, we have a separate track So if you don't do anything, all it's doing is just pitching up and down. But if you go to slice, it automatically slice it in place. Right. Okay. Great. It's it's you know that's cool. But if we change these things up here, oh, we change that. Let's see if we can. Change up the division, like, automatically. I can say. We'll go back to 16. Now let's go to one four. I'm not sure if Studio One can do that, like change up the divisions like that. Maybe it can, and, and I just forgot again, <laughs> or or haven't even noticed. But um, okay, so Let's get to some some fun here. Could change the envelope here for the, the pitch, of course.
so like and I'm just kind of playing around like I'm just hitting random buttons and so but this is like the power of this sampler or the sampler in here Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say right now. You know. I was listening to a clip, a uh, a clip. Yeah, I think that's what it is. A clip at the end, and I just put the fade out on it, and it fixed it. You see how I took the original sample and changed. You can't do this in Studio One. I'm telling you. And I liked it so much that I think I'm going to leave that right there and do something with that sound. I think that's really, really cool. So let's just duplicate it. <laughs> so I don't want to touch it. And so we'll keep going with this one. Let's go back to slicing. Wait, did it just turn into a... Maybe this is where the LFO comes in. Yup. Like we're not even in the drums no more. We we didn't went totally off the grid at this point. Oh, they got put a mental on you. Oh, that's dope. That's just the sampler. The sampler. There is no other effects or things, but to go even further than that, okay, all right, Ella, okay, great. Um, so if we go back to the drum, the drum here. So this, this is the original sample, right? The sampler not only, or the drum rack, not only deals with samples because first of all this is like this is simpler it's it's like a it's like its own thing it's not really you you're not really dealing with the the sample by itself like you are in impact you are it's it's a container right the drum rack is a container 
or a holding is I don't know how do you explain that, but it's 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 a container. So let me see if I can find something that would be like, you know, a little different. So check this out. I'm pretty sure this is not just a sample. This is like a synthesizer or something like that. So um as I pause, I'm just like I'm in a different I'm in a different mind frame right now because right here this is not even a sample, yo. This is uh, a total different device. And the drum rack is definitely, is what it is, it's a rack. It holds different things that you could put inside of the rack itself. Um, and by the way, everything is automatically routed out. So like if you, you know, unlock this, it's already grouped. Like this is what this is and this is what that is. So everything has its own, you know what I mean? I can. You know what I'm saying? whatever right the, the, okay so the, it's doing that okay um let's see where is another it was another inch something i don't know i'm just going for random stuff right now um i don't know drum a drum synth let's go for it go for this and I think this is a, a synthesizer see there you go right there <laughs> let's change this back I, I got I got carried away Turn this one up. Um, I, I'm just doing random stuff right now um yeah th this particular device happens to be something that just keep going and i believe i can have it to shut off like with, with a macro or something like that but um at this moment i i think i went over and beyond like like what it is right here like Studio One and Ableton Live is on the two different platforms. There, there are two different things. This is like it's almost like not fair. I feel, I feel like, I feel like I wasn't fair when doing this comparison because there are two different, like, two different platforms. If you don't know what you're doing in Ableton, you will be lost in this program. Same as Bitwig. I feel like, like I said before, Ableton and Bitwig is to be compared together. But Studio One is to can be is is to be compared to things like Cubase, Logic, maybe Reason, and perhaps Pro Tools. Now you can't make music in Pro Tools. I prefer not to. That's not something I would do because I come from that platform and I know what it is to try to do that. I'm sure they improved a lot over time. But yeah. 
this is not something we talk about amongst you know the the circle here um it's usually like the other anything but pro twos but i would say pro twos because studio one does have the capabilities of mixing you know it's like one of those again subjective so it's a totally subjective it, it just depends on what you prefer to mix in but studio one has a lot going on in terms of like the end result like when it's when it's time to master things and stuff like that is it's just it's just a little bit more that they offer which is why i like doing things in studio one versus pro twos but anyway um hopefully i was able to redeem myself um you can definitely drag over samples and it will automatically slice inside of studio one so i apologize for saying that it doesn't do that um i i stand corrected <laughs> but um when we do in comparison this is kind of what i mean so i wanted to make a video showing you guys that so hopefully this video wasn't too long but i'm very passionate about what i do and i i try to make sure that i iron out and and spit the details you know like I could have made this video two minutes long, but I like to go in details and break things down. So once again, Ellip, Creative Sound, Beat Project, signing off. Remember, music is art. You're the artist. Paint your pictures. Stay creative without rules. <laughs>